you want to use that. Did I answer your question? Did I answer your question? Yeah. 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 But how you know that you can get there is really by monitoring your blood sugars on a regular basis because it's a combination of your fasting blood sugars and a combination of your sugars two hours after you eat. So it's a combination. You can think of it as a memory. So it is really, really important that you monitor your blood sugars to make sure that you stay on track. So what I'll do now is um, I'll let Shift Dana um, go and then I'll just finish up by talking a little bit about um, the meals. So like she said, my name is Chef Dana, uh, Chef Dana Herbert. I am from the Delaware area. Um, I own a bakery in Delaware called Desserts by Dana. Um, if any of you guys ever watch some of the shows like on Food Network or Cake Boss or stuff like that, you might have seen me on there once or twice or three times or <laughs> quite a bit. But um, I love food. I've been in love with food ever since I've been a little kid hanging at my grandmom's counter. A lot of people ask me, how did uh, Mr. Flour Butter Sugar wind up in the world of uh, like healthy cooking? And it's a fair question. Um, like a lot of people, I have diabetes that runs through my family. My brother's a type 1. Um, I think he was around 12 when he got diagnosed um, with uh, type 1 diabetes. Uh, my dad's kind of on that borderline. The doctor's really watching his A1C really, really, really close. Um, and my grandparents, they were diabetic before I even knew what diabetes was. Um, I remember being little, and every time we were there, they would always say, I gotta go take my sugar pill. I gotta go take my sugar pill. Now, to a five-year-old and a three-year-old, you're like, wait a minute, where are you guys hiding all this candy that you're talking about every day? And lo and behold, it wasn't until my brother was diagnosed when we were like, oh, you're talking about diabetes all the time. We never knew. They just would go off and say, we're going to take our sugar pill, we'll be right back. And we're thinking peppermints and all that other cool stuff. Um, so that's how I got into healthy cooking. Um, really as a, I guess you could say, love for my brother, love for my family. Um, it really just make a change. So that's how I got into healthy cooking. Um, today we're going to do two dishes. We're going to do a smoked turkey chili verde. And we're going to do a, a, an apple cranberry almond salad. How's that sound? Cool. All right. So we're going to start off by doing the chili first. We'll get that going because we got to cook the meats and so forth. And then we'll jump back over and we will do the uh, salad. And then we'll come back and finish the chili. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to quickly cut up some onion and some pepper for the chili. Just like this. Now, depending upon how much you're making, of course, you determine how much pepper and onion and so forth you're using. Everybody like onions? Yeah. Yeah? All right, onions are good for you. Good source of vitamins and minerals and so forth. And they're known for helping just prevent infectious diseases, so those are good. I remember growing up one time I was sick. And just like old medicine, grandma stuff, you know what I mean? But my grandmother, she tied a cloth around me and uh, had it filled with onions because I was running this high fever. True story. And when she took the cloth off, the onions were sauteed. It was the craziest thing I'd ever seen. But I, I, I felt the old school stuff, but I felt great. So onions are good just for maintaining the immune system, shall we say. All right, so we got our onions, we have our peppers, we got our pan warming up there. It's important that your pan is hot. Anybody ever been to someone's house, show of hands, and the food's been greasy? Greasy? Uh-huh, a couple people, and a couple people probably like, I don't want to raise my hand because they're sitting right next to me. But, <laughs> But the reason it's greasy is because you started with a cold pan, you put cold food in there, there was cold oil, when the pores opened up, the oil just rushed into the food instead of sauteing it. There we go, we 
dump that turkey in, and that's the sound that we're looking for, that sizzle. And now to this, we're going to add some garlic. You can't have chili without the garlic, right? Yeah. Alright, let's get some garlic in there. And then we're going to dump in our peppers and onions. Come over here 
and we are going to work on a salad. Now, who's a foodie out there? Yeah? You want to come play? No. No? I just eat. You just want to eat. <laughs> Who wants to come play with the chef? Oh, he's in one house. He's picking out all the seeds now out of the lemon. All right. Now, what's her name? Barbara. Barbara. All right. Barbara's going to help me make the dressing today. So, Barbara, if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to have Barbara squeeze out the lemon juice into the bowl. I'm taking a set of gloves first. And Barbara's going to work on this dressing. Now, this dressing can be really, really easy. It's actually something you could give to your kids if you wanted them to play. If they, you know, like our, like our daughter at home, she insists on sometimes wanting to help cook. So my wife lets her help her make pancakes and stuff like that. But this dressing you could do as well. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want to do it in a bowl, you could do it in like a mason jar. Put all the ingredients in there. Put the cap on it real tight. Pass it over to your kids. They can go in the other room and shake, 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 and come back. Okay, now I got to get the seeds out of here. Don't worry, they'll be at the bottom. We won't get it in there. I got some tricks. <laughs> okay. I got the trick. Don't worry. Okay. Got the back. Okay. So while Barbara squeezes those lemons, I'm going to start cutting these apples because these are going to be the apples for the salad. Now, I could do it all fancy smancy like in a restaurant, cut it and fan it out and so forth. But let's face it, we like to taste apple in every bite, right? Yes. I mean, don't you hate when you get a salad and you've eaten up all the good stuff in the first five bites and then you're just left with greens with just a little bit of dressing on it, right? That's the truth. So my advice as a foodie, and we're looking to eat healthy, cut your apples up real small, nice and small, so that you get a little bit of apple in every single bite. So I'm just going to cut my apple up real small. Does he watch you when you're cooking and tell you how small to make it or whatever, huh? No, he just comes and that's oh! I, I, oh okay. I, 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 I do the fun part. I You're come, lucky. I come in taste. Yeah. Okay. If not, she'd never let you in. Right, right, That's right. <laughs> All right, so we got our juice of the lemons in there. Yep. All right, good stuff. That's the last one. That's the last one. Look at all the seeds, my God. I know. All right, so the next thing is we're going to add, we're going to add our oil. Into that now? Mm hmm. Good to the last drop. That's right. We're going to add our vinegar. Now that oh, one there, we're sure. using a white wine vinegar. Yeah. I mean, a white vinegar. You could use an apple cider vinegar. You could use a uh, champagne vinegar. Uh, malted, no. You could do that. You like malted? Yep. We can work that. All right. Next, we're going to add the apple juice. How many cups is that? That is, I'm glad you asked. How many? It's. Do half of that. Yeah. Half. This has sugar, doesn't it? This is a, a no sugar added apple juice. However, you bring up a good point in that fruit, apples, okay. for apple juice, Ooh. they do have carbs in them. So you have to be mindful, like when you're out there eating, fruit will turn into sugar. So just be nice, nice with that. Alright, turn that off. It looks like it's just about done. Okay, next thing you're going to add, you're going to add that sugar there in that dish. The, the little sugar in here? Mm-hmm. Okay. We're going to add the sugar. Now, I know you're like, wait a minute, I'm diabetic, I can't have sugar. Yes, there's certain kinds that you can have. Mm. Certain kinds and in the proper portion, you could have a little bit of sugar. So in this case, with all this dressing, it would be okay in this much salad because once you break it out into the servings, you're only getting just a little bit of sugar. And if you go to the restaurant, you just turn around and tell them, put it on the side, and you dip your fork in. I love her. I love her. That's what <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm 73. Now. You're worried. Hey, no, but that was going to be my next step. Hey, yeah. I beat that. She beat me. I so. pay attention to the food channel. She does. <laughs> so when you go out to eat, like she said, get your dressing on the side. We do what's called the fork method. Now you're in control of how much dressing is actually on your salad versus in the back where we just pour it on, we mix it, and now it comes. Yeah, no, Great it's tip. true, because I, this, I like my Thousand Island, I like blue cheese, but if you dip it in the fork, you can have the good, because now you're controlling it. There you go. 
There you go. Now what I'm going to mix it all here. Yeah, you're going to uh, mix it, mix it, mix it. While she's mixing it, I'm going to grab my bowl here. We're going to put it in the finish. Just remember, if you get a seed, that's it. <laughs> I mean, if I don't have ten, I don't have one. That's all right. All right, next thing is we're going to add in the apple. And you can see it's nice and small and it's going to spread all throughout. We're going to add in the cranberry. Uh -huh. Dried cranberry. We're going to add in the almonds. Now, if you're not an almond fan, no worries. You could do... Cashews. Mm -hmm. You could do cashews. You could do walnuts. You could do pine nuts, pecan. Okay. And another good tip is anything that tastes good in your salad, you could do in a sauteed spinach too. Okay. So, so if you liked everything you have there, you could saute your spinach and at the very end toss in your almonds, your cranberries, and your apple and mix it nice. Well, spinach right now is doing pretty good on sale, so it's easier to buy spinach. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm just going to cut up that last little bit of apple, add it right to the top, and then we're going to add that dressing. Strawberry spinach salad. We are just doing uh, a rendition of that because strawberries have been going out of season, you know, and they're changing since we're going into winter. We did the apple and we did the cranberry. All right. So let's pour some of your dressing on there. Can I just put this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just nice and easy. Oh. Go ahead. And stop. All right, and now I'm going to mix it up. Everybody give Barbara a round of applause. You're welcome. All right, so. I watch the television now. That's it. That's it. Never mind the paper. All right, so I'm just mixing my salad up. And if you guys can see from there, if the, the greens are nice and shiny, which is what you're looking for, um, you want your greens to be nicely coated. Um, my dad is funny, he loves um, French dressing. But his problem is sometimes when I watch him, he has uh, what I call the lake at the bottom of the bowl. Like you're eating your salad and it's still like this much like dressing kind of on the bottom of the bowl. And um, so you, won't, you don't want that. And if you guys can see in here, when I pull the greens back, see right there, there's no dressing really hanging out at the bottom. So your greens are nice and coated, nice and tossed and everything. And that's what you're looking for with your salad. All right, so that's the cranberry apple almond salad. That's nice. Yeah. Courtesy of Barbara. And it smelled nice, too. Yeah. It, it wasn't, I thought maybe the vinegar was going to be more overpowering. You know, and it's not. It's really got that hint of it, but it's the apple that's overpowering mm -hmm. the apple juice. So this way right here. Yeah. Yep. People always, they, they tend to think like, oh my goodness, I just came from the doctor. He told me I'm diabetic. I can't eat anything now. Not true. You just have to know how to cook it and how to season it and how to flavor it and so forth. And like um, she was saying, what's the proper portion size? You know what I mean? And knowing like if you're going to go for that little bit of cake or that little small piece of something, well then you need to adjust your diet in other areas so that the numbers work out. All right? But you can't, you can't eat it all the time. But and you know, Chef, her and I go out after PPAC, we go out for dinner. And the thing is, I've learned order the, when they give me my order and I'm looking at all too, I order a container. I already pretty well cut up everything, Hunter, and I have it to take home and I eat. I will fill up on salad or sometimes I like soup, you know, first. But I bring home that mm -hmm. so that I have it for the following day. Did everybody hear what she said? That, that, was, that was a great right. tip for eating out. Everybody heard it? Okay. Right. Yeah. So basically what she's saying is that when she goes out to eat, she actually asks where to go container before she digs in. And I think that's a great strategy um, when we're dining out. So we're not um, overeating and we're controlling our portions. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Oh, not only that, food is expensive. So this way here, they're not going to feed it to the animals. Mine's coming home to me. The other half. <laughs> 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 this is actually very good. Very, very good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as restaurants, they're trying to show you, you know, value, and so they're giving you these huge portions, you know. Um, but like she said, it doesn't make sense when you're looking at it. I mean, say like paella. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boom! It hits the table. And you're like, 
like, oh, my house got eaten all of that. You don't have to eat it all right then. You can save some, like you say, cut it in half, cut it in quarters. Um, once you know what that portion size should be, like, that's half the battle. Right. I know you had a question. I just wanted to ask a question about the salad. Yes. Uh, you said now, if you use the balsamic vinegar, yeah. would it make a difference and you still use the apple juice? Um, or would you, you use something different? Balsamic, I mean, you could still use the apple juice. My one note with balsamic is that sometimes the sugar content's a little higher than balsamic. Like, you have these different vinegars. And part of the way you can tell if you weren't reading the label, the sugar contents would be if you were to reduce them. The ones that get syrupy have the most sugar in them. You know what I mean? Balsamic has more sugar in it than the apple cider or the um, white wine vinegar. Yeah. So if you were going to do that, bring the apple juice down a little bit. Very good question. Yep. All right. So here we go. This is the end of the chili. And then to finish that, I just put on a little bit of fat free cheddar cheese. And what I added in there while we were talking was just the scallions and the cilantro that I mentioned before. We're going to add in this fat free cheddar, just like that. The cheese person. Um, and then if you wanted to add one more thing, you could add like a fat-free sour cream, or if you didn't want to do the fat-free sour cream, you could go with a Greek yogurt. That Greek yogurt nowadays has that pretty much same consistency, still going to give you that sour twang as well, just a little bit better for you than the sour cream is. One thing also that you want to keep in mind is that when you're looking at fat-free products, check the label. Check the label. Sometimes, some brands, not all, some brands will increase the sodium or they'll increase the sugars in there to try to bring the flavor back up. Because, you know, fat has flavor, that's truthful, but some companies will do that to try to increase the flavor of the product. So just check out your labels. They're basically the blueprint or the roadmap, you know, to what you're eating. So make sure you check Isn't them. it better just to buy the real stuff and cut it down to yourself? Less you, is best, but if you have that, you got all the flavor, right, Dave? If you, if you that. have that discipline, then yes. And it's going to change for each person. If you've got that kind of discipline, you can do it. Just like with this dressing. It has sugar in it, but it's taken down, right? If you have that kind of discipline, you can certainly do that, because you'll know what the numbers look like. If you're one of those people that's like, ooh, I don't know if I could do that. Go to the fat-free products and the lower sugar products. You know what I mean? You know yourself best. You and your doctor. Uh, Laurie knows. I mean, I have rose and I, if there's things that I have, I think nothing to call and interrupt and even a message on the phone. And <laughs> because it, it's helping. Mm -hmm. As you get older, you're mm -hmm. less active. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that, of course, we've chased grandchildren, but the thing is that it's harder. So you really watch. I'm a bad person for mayonnaise. I only eat helmets, and they always holler at me that I, that I find I use less. Instead of using a tablespoon, I turn around, and I have an eighth of a spoon. Sometimes I'll have two. And that way I have the real stuff, but I have less of it. Mm -hmm. I've tried so hard, believe me. I've got hand and mouth disease, you know? Well, you know, people think that it's like, hey, no, that's the truth. Yeah. You know, and, and that's why I'm asking you on that. Sometimes this is what I've tried. Yeah. Yeah. It's something about self-control. And as said, it's like a muscle that when you exercise, it's better than you get. But it's, yeah. it's, it is difficult. As he said, you know yourself better than anyone else. And she's my mentor here. I don't know if I have she's to do I try stuff. Yes, yeah, she is. You, know, you, <laughs> have that. you better have a, a companion. It's fine to have a relative or a family, but you've got to have an outside friend who's basically in the same boat, but she, was, she already had a heart attack and everything, so she had to go back on her sugar and everything. So we, we work. Yeah. Supporting each other yeah. is very, very helpful. So, you know, you're very... You must be very grateful that you do have someone like that. Um, support yeah. from friends is really, really important. Yeah. So. Support Thank you so much for that. All right, so the numbers on these dishes, I believe the salad is 100 calories per serving, and that's based off of um, one and a half cups. The chili, I believe, is 190 calories based off of one cup. Salad has 15 grams of carb, and the chili has uh, 21. 
Now, if you ever want to turn a salad into a meal, just cook a piece of grilled chicken right on there. You know what I mean? Yep. You can. You can. Yep. Turn it into a meal. How is that? Oh, that 